Hello, uh, this is Dr. Phil Rosencrantz. Now this video is about how to use factor notation and Excel functions to make calculations for cash flows in our fiscal considerations course. In our book, this is covered in chapters three and four, and this is foundational in order to be uh, able to make all the calculations for the rest of the semester. So on the inside cover of our book, you can see the cash flow diagrams representing different cash flows. For example, the single payment cash flow where you start with an initial present value or principal sum, and it compounds, it grows over time at some interest rate until you get to a future sum. And so these formulas are how we can calculate these present values or future values, or in the case of uniform series like payments, calculate future sums or present sums related to those. Now we have three options to make these calculations. We have formulas, algebraic formulas. You can see me circling that with my cursor that plug and crank with the calculator. Back in the day, it was with the slide rule. Or you can use Excel just to do simple formulas like that. The second option are using factors. Uh, this is factor notation. And here we have to look up factors from a set of tables in the back of our book. And I'll show you some tables in a minute. The th other option is, and I'm going to switch to the other inside front cover page. And at the bottom, you can see the primary Excel functions that we'll use. And these are available uh, through the formula bar uh, the, uh, next to the little F of X icon that we have in Excel. In fact, if you look up, I'm circling that right now. So I'll be getting back to that. So let me move on a chart that shows which factors we use and Excel functions we use that correspond to the different cash flows. For example, the first one I showed you, if you want to find a present value of a future sum, how do you do that? Whatever compounding periods we're involved with and whatever interest rate we're at. Well, with factor notation, if we want to find the present value of a future sum at a, a periodic interest rate, I percent, uh, for n periods, then we go to a set of tables and we look up that factor and multiply it by the future value that we have. Now, I'm going to demonstrate that on another page. With an Excel function, if we go up and find the f of x icon, if you're not familiar with this, this icon opens up a whole rich library of different types of mathematical functions. So let me click on this. You can see from uh, clicking on this category link, you've got financial, date and time, math and trig, statistical. You have a whole bunch of different mathematical functions available to you in this library. But for this course, we want the financial functions. And to find the present value of a future sum, I want to use the present value function. I go down to PV, click on that, open it up, and now you have a wonderful uh, little window here. In order to find the present value of the future sum, we use the Excel function, and it shows you here you need to put in the rate, the number of periods, zero in the payment field, the future value, the F value, and the FV field, and the last one is zero. And so this is the Excel function to use for this situation. And we have the same thing, a uh, similar thing, if we want the future value of a present sum. The factor notation is pretty self-explanatory. You use the F over P column on the table and use the FV uh, Excel function and you leave the third field as a zero and you put the present value in the fourth field. Now, um, this is kind of tedious, but uh, once you catch on, it's not too bad. 
So now let me jump to the uniform series and point out that if we want to find the present value of a uniform series, now we're finding the present value of an A series or a payment or a uniform series. And the factor notation is pretty straightforward. But now we're still using the PV Excel function, but we put our uniform series amount in the PMT field, the third one, and we leave the fourth one zero because we don't have a present value in this problem. And so you can see that um, it's not a straight one-to-one -one, uh, comparison. Now, if we want to find a uniform series that's equivalent to a present sum, in that case, we have to use the PMT Excel function, the payment function. And then it'll give you a payment either for a, based on a present value or based on a future value. That's the next one. Now we have uh, factors for gradients. Gradients are when we have our uh, cash flows are increasing or decreasing by a fixed amount every period. So we have factors for those, but we don't have Excel functions for those. So with that, let me go on. So here's our situation. We're going to borrow $10,000 for a car. And uh, we've already made a down payment, but we have a five-year loan at 6% uh, nominal interest rate. That's the annual interest rate. It's a five-year loan, 60 months. So our PV value in this formula will be 10,000. That's the present value. Now we need the periodic interest rate. The periodic interest rate is rate per month. Well, we have a nominal interest rate of 6%. So to find our periodic, we have to divide the nominal by the number of periods in a year. Well, there's 12 months in a year. So our periodic interest rate is 0 0.005 and N is 60 because we have 60 months in our five-year loan. Now, using the notation, <coughs> if we want to um, find out what the payment is, that means we want to find a given P. What's the uniform series given the present value? So we would want to find the factor for A over P, a half a percent per period for 60 periods. Now, where do we get that from? Well, I happen to have a table here. Let me pull it up for this particular situation. So we have to go to the A over P column. That's where this is here. I also should have mentioned we have to go to the half a percent page. This is a whole page in the back of your book. So you have to flip to that page or scroll to it wherever you ha are getting it from. A over P column and you want to go down to 60. N is 60 and you find the factor is 0 0.0193. I know it's hard to see on your screen. Now let me go back. You multiply 10,000 by 1.0193 uh, and you get $193 is a monthly payment based on this factor notation. Now, how would we do this using Excel functions? So let's calculate the payment using Excel functions. Method one is the insert value method. So if we click on our cell, F of X icon, uh, here we have the payment window, and we can put in uh, 0 0.005, or we can put in 6% divided by 12, and Excel is smart enough to figure out how to get the 0 0.005. In per number of periods of 60, future present value was uh, 10,000. There's no future value. Click OK, and it cranks out our uh, payment. So that is cool, but let's look at something else. We can also uh, use uh, the table to give us our values. So I'm going to go ahead and show you here. I'm going to click here and pull up the payment window again. Now, I can 
instead of putting in the actual numbers, I can click on the cell uh, that has uh, the value. So for example, if I click on this cell here, it gives me 6% B8. I'll divide that by 12. And that gives me my first cell by using an address. The number of periods, click on six, the number of periods, and that's 60. Again, I have my answer 193.33. Now, you'll notice that there's a negative sign in front of the number. Uh, that's because in the cash flow diagrams, it always shows you the, the opposite sign of the cash flow you started with. So if you want to change that, you can go up to your formula bar and right before the function, put in a negative sign and then that will reverse the sign and you get the number you're happier with. Method three is similar to method two. The only difference is instead of clicking on the cell, you type the cell number in. Excel is pretty powerful because you can do a lot of spreadsheet functions by using addressing and using Excel formulas where you can drag stuff down. And anyway, it's very powerful. Let me stop here. Hopefully you'll be able to understand the Excel functions and factor notation a little bit better.